Donnie Jean Chandler was born September 5, 1934, in Council Bluffs, Iowa, but grew up in Tulsa, excelling in several sports at Will Rogers High School, baseball, basketball, and football. Already known as Babe Chandler, he quarterbacked the Ropers football team, leading it to the city championship and runner-up in the 6A conference. He and five of his teammates were named to the all-conference team. Upon graduation, he played for Bacon Indian College in Muskogee, and his outstanding play there led to a scholarship to the University of Florida, where he played halfback and, as a senior, led all major colleges in the nation in punting. Babe was drafted as a punter in the fifth round by the Giants, 57th overall, but his career almost ended when it had barely begun. He and his fellow rookie Sam Huff, discouraged about making the team at the Giants' 1956 training camp in Vermont, awoke Vince Lombardi, then the Giants' offensive coordinator, from a nap one morning. They turned in their playbooks and got as far as the airport when Lombardi picked them up and brought them back to training camp. Number 34 and number 70 both became all-conference players. And here's the guy with the educated toe, John Chandler, star punter for the New York Giants, who last year averaged 46.6 yards per punt. John, would you mind showing the fans the real trick of getting off those long ones? Well, the most important thing, Chris, is the complete level drop of the ball. Then, of course, the drive of the leg up to the ball and the full quality. Nifty Don, thanks. In his first six seasons with the Giants, Babe was solely their punter. He had not been a place kicker since high school. In his seventh season, he began kicking field goals and extra points as well, replacing the retired Pat Summerall. The Giants won the NFL championship in Don's rookie year, 1956. After nine years with the Giants, Don became a Green Bay Packer in 1965, which reunited him with Vince Lombardi this time as his head coach. The Packers won the NFL championship that year, the last season before the Super Bowl era. The next two seasons, 1966 and 67, they won the first two Super Bowls, which were played in January 1967 and 68. Don was named to the Pro Bowl first team for the 1967 season. Babe Chandler shares the record for most field goals in a Super Bowl with four in the Packers' 33-14 victory over Oakland in the January 1968 game. That four-field goal Super Bowl was his last game. He departed with a tribute to Lombardi, the hard-driving coach who had kept him from quitting back in 1956 when they both were giants. I owe my career to that man, Chandler said. I owe him everything. Although Babe was only a fifth round pick when the Giants selected him in the 1956 draft, he went on to be chosen as the punter on the NFL's all-decade team for the 1960s. Among his football honors are several punting and scoring titles. During his 12 pro seasons, he kicked 94 field goals in 161 attempts and 248 extra points in 258 attempts. Don Chandler's high place kicks made it difficult for game officials to judge whether the ball split the uprights. Today's NFL goalposts are 18 feet 6 inches apart, beginning 10 feet off the ground, and extend another 30 feet high. But that wasn't the case back when frozen Lambeau Field in Green Bay hosted the 1965 divisional playoff between Vince Lombardi's Packers and Don Shula's Colts. On that day, an off-kilter kick by Don Chandler changed NFL uprights forever. Bretkowski finds Anderson open on a deep hook pattern to put Green Bay in field goal range with hopes of tying the game. 
Don Chandler is the man who can be counted on to deliver the key play when it is most needed. His placement curves between the uprights to send the game into sudden death overtime. The question at the field goal wasn't good. You know, Chandler knew he missed it when he kicked it because he, he looked up and then he just uh, jerked his head in disgust knowing that he had missed it. After that, they decided that they would put the officials under the uprights looking up to see whether or not the field goal was good. So they decided to do that. They also raised the sidebars of the uprights, and they call those the, the Baltimore extensions. After retiring from football, he invested in real estate and was active in the Tulsa community until his death on August 11th, 2011, at age 76. leaving his wife, Pat, a son, two daughters, and 10 grandchildren. He was inducted posthumously into the Will Rogers High School Hall of Fame in 2012.